How are we doing folks? Well, you're joining me on a beautiful hot sunny day in Ireland and uh, it's 25 degrees out so it's a bit of a scorcher uh, by our measure and um, we are um, going to tackle a little uh, problem that, um, that uh, we're facing because of the uh, angled CV joints are working at in the uh, camper van since the engine conversion. Now for those of you who uh, have not been playing along at home, uh, basically um, I did a TDI engine swap, uh, flipped Passat gearbox um, on uh, the camper van which you can just about see because it's backlit you can't really see it there, it's there anyway, you will see it in a little while. Um, the uh, orientation of the gearbox means that the CV joints are working at a bit more of an angle than they would normally have been and the uh, standard T25 uh, CV joints are not happy. They're clicking quite a bit and um, it's, a, it's a point of failure which I'm not happy about so um, I need to address it. So what I did was I picked up two complete um, Porsche 944 drive shafts with the CV joints and boots already fitted to them and uh, disassembled them and cleaned them up. Now some of you will be saying, oh don't tell me he's using the uh, used parts. Well if you see the price of the new CV joints for Porsche 944s you could understand why for a start and secondly um, the, uh, the mileage that I'm going to be doing in the van is absolutely fine. Plus what we can do is we can assemble the CV joints uh, back to front and this is something we will exp I will explain to you in more detail as we go. It basically means that they're going to be rotating in the opposite direction to the way they used to be rotating, meaning that uh, they're getting a fresh kind of wearing face um, to, to work on and we should get a bit of life out of them. Now um, I uh, did, because obviously I had four drive, uh, two drive shafts, I had four CV joints, one of them was, uh, I did deem it to be unserviceable, so um, a friend of mine, Trev, thanks Trev, um, sent me on a, a another uh, Porsche 944 CV joint that he had, which was also unserviceable but in a different way to mine. So between the two, we should be able to make one serviceable one. So um, let's uh, let's tear into them. The first thing we need to do is we need to uh, set them all out and assemble them, label them, grease them, and then we need to remove the shaft from the van and have a look at them. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so here is the makings of the uh, the CV joints. Basically, they're already disassembled, as you can see. So these are the outer races, these are the cages, and these are the inner races. They're basically bearings for all the world. And essentially, what happens is it, it, you'll see that the um, the inner and outer uh, cages have grooves in them that the balls fit into. And uh, this here is my ball bag. So um, that's uh, yeah, that's the bag that I keep my balls in. So um, we will be looking at them now in a minute as well. So um, yeah, uh, what we need to do is to make sure that. Um, uh, the uh, outer race that uh, had the wear, the excess wear on it is discarded and we'll have a look at this one here as well too um, which is wrapped up in tape. This is the one that Trev sent me. Um, we will uh, yeah, we'll get rid of that. Um, much, as I, much as I love you guys and appreciate you watching my videos, I don't want you getting my address. <laughs> um, so uh, we will um, We'll open that up as well too and we'll just, we'll just set it aside because we're going to have to look at that in more detail anyway and see how uh, how it actually is. Uh, we need to disassemble it. Now it's been cleaned already and um, yeah, we uh, we should be alright in that respect but um, hopefully now between uh, between these five CV joints I should be able to make four serviceable ones. Um, they're not going to be new condition but uh, to be honest with you they're still going to be better than what's in the van at the moment and um, basically just to give you a, a little bit of a clue as to what the difference is the balls in these uh, the balls in these uh, Porsche CV joints are 17 millimeters in diameter and the ones in the van are 19 millimeters which uh, affects the angle that they can actually operate on so what we'll do is we'll actually take down um, I have a micrometer here I'll open my ball bag I'll have a quick look and I'll actually stick a vernier on them and measure it, so... <laughs> Batteries are fairly dead in that. Anyway, you can just see, just about see it, it'll do for the moment. Yeah. Seventeen mil, that's grand. Okay, right, so that's that's what we're looking at there. It's slightly larger than seventeen mil actually, but it's not a... Uh, 17.3 is what I'm saying. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. In this instance, we know they're smaller than the ones in the uh, in the van, so that's really what uh, what our focus was. So the first thing I want to do is uh, we're going to inspect the outer races, and we're going to actually have a look at the um, the side the wear is on, the face of the wear is on. If you look here, you'll see that the wear on this one here, for example, is it's minimal, really. You know, I mean, it's, there's there's discoloration uh, for the most part, tiny little bit of pitting there. But what we're going to be doing is, because the pitting is on 
you can't really see it, is on that side, we're going to flip it around so the, way, the ball will be actually operating against that side when you're driving forwards. In reverse, I think we can cope, in fairness. I'm not going to be reversing down the motorway, you know? So, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to label the outside uh, the outside race here um, just with a marker, just to say that this is the direction of rotation that we want. So, essentially what, what's happening is, it's going to be rotating in that direction here, and if you can imagine my thumb being the ball, it's going to be pressing against that race there, so that basically is the direction of the rotation there. So we want to put an arrow on that, and um, yeah, we'll do that now. Okay, so I've basically what I've done is I've actually measured all, or uh, I've I inspected all of these again anyway, just to make sure that um, the, uh, the the wear direction is actually the opposite to the way it used to be. Now there is there's one thing there that kind of gives me a little bit of. Um, question uh, is the, the groove there but to be honest with you I like I think it'll be fine you know I'm sure that's just a it's to tell you what way it's supposed to run but um like they're they're mirror image you know I mean there's no there's no difference uh either side of them so we're just going to assume that they're all right that way um and uh yeah I've, I've also looked at the inner um the inner race as well too the inner race is um you can see that in this one this is probably the worst of them actually and there's a little bit of pitting on uh, some of the wearing faces but if it's operating in the opposite direction that should be absolutely fine and um, it should be happy enough again so we'll we we'll leave that there and then now we're going to have, just have a quick look at the um uh, the cages and the balls and that as well too and then we're going to just start fitting them all together and then then that's basically them shelved and what I'm going to do then once I have them all sorted out and I know I've got four good CV joints I'm going to take the shafts out of the van and um, we're going to start putting them together now luckily enough I actually got with the, the shafts I got a set of boots and um, I've cleaned them up and given them a little lick of paint and that as well too um, so um, I'm using the old boots and the reason I'm using the old boots is because modern rubber is shite okay you cannot seem to get decent boots, you can't get decent bushes, you can't get decent anything. So, um, you'll often hear people saying, oh yeah, no, I'm after having to replace the, um, I'm having to replace the uh, track rod ends every year now for the, uh, the roadworthiness test. And it's simply because of the fact that the boot splits. And it's because there's, there was a chemical used in rubber years ago which isn't used in it anymore, and unfortunately it makes it less than ideal really now. Um, which isn't a good enough solution, to be honest with you. It's down to quality, you know. I mean, and the problem is the fact that if people keep buying crap quality components, people will keep making them. So, you know, sometimes you just you have to bite the bullet and go back to the dealership and actually get decent quality stuff there. Even then, sometimes it's questionable, depending on the OEM. Anyway, right, uh, let's, uh, let's have a look. We need a total of uh, 24 balls, um, because there's six in each, obviously. So, uh, we will have a look at them now, and... Um, make sure that there, there was one that, that seemed to be skidding um, and uh, you can actually have a look in the, the CV joint, uh, the outer race that I'm actually rejecting, you can see um, there's quite a lot of pitting on that one there, um, so this is the one I'm rejecting for that re very reason and you can see there as well too, it's not great. So this would be kind of the worst of them, yeah, the other ones are a lot better, uh, just some of them have hardly any wear on them at all, so um, uh, we're, uh, we're pretty good that way. So. Um, yeah, uh, I will. Um, I'll have a look. We'll take out. We we'll do. We'll do them six at a time. Um, four, five, and six. And then I have. Uh, I have six there that, uh, that came with the CV joints that Trev uh, gave me. What I'm actually doing is um, the garage is not the brightest in the world, so I'm actually uh, taking them out of the sunlight. So there's one there straight away that I am going to reject. Uh, you can see there's a bit of a uh, discoloration and pitting on it. So I'm rejecting that one. So I'll put that in the box behind you. Um, and uh, we'll go through those other five and we'll pick one more out as well too and uh, see then and hopefully uh, we will have a decent set of balls uh, tongue firmly planted in cheek folks quiet down at the back um, so I'm really just having a look here now I'd be happy enough with that one so there's one okay Nice two. You're looking for kind of um, deep pitting, scoring, or uh, loss of material. I mean, some of them they have the tiniest little bits of wear on them. But you know, I mean, look at as I said, if I do three thousand miles a year in the van, that's absolutely that's about it. And um, there's less power going to the wheels than in in the van than there is in a Porsche 944, even with the new engine. Um, 
I don't know what a Porsche 944 power output is like actually. I just think they're a nice car though. Um, the one that uh, your man has actually, the guy I bought these off, is a lovely car. Um, it's white, it's really nice actually. Uh, there's another one I'm going to reject, see that? There's a lot of discoloration on that, so there's no point in trying to put that back in and expecting it to last any amount of time. So there's, uh, there's another one gone, okay. Now I can I can reject a total of six, because I have six six more there, um, but of course the, you have to bear in mind that some of those ones might be uh, unserviceable as well too. So okay, so there's six, uh, six balls in or out of a race cage. We'll have a look at the cage there, there now. Let's have a quick look and see. Um, I mean, really, the the object of the cage is just to support the um, support the balls in their appropriate position. But again, what I can do is I can actually put uh, I can put this in the opposite way around and have it operating the other way. You, you'll see there on the platforms there uh, there is um, there's little indents. So I think if I actually put it in, so so I'm trying to think now the the direction of rotation. If it was like this. That would have the that would have the balls over that that direction there, and um, so what we do what we can do is we can actually we can actually flip it over and we put it in that way. So um, let's say that's uh, that's the way the uh, that's the way the CV joint is going to go now, um, and uh, we'll just pop the balls in and we will uh, assemble it fully. So let's do that. Let's let's uh, let's actually get one of them finished and. Um, then we can move on to the rest of them. So we'll put them put them aside, and this is where you see me fumbling like mad trying to get things in. So we get that goes like that, and then You know what's going to happen, of course. As soon as I just just have it ready to to, to put into the outer race, the um, they'll drop and I'll go all over the place. So um, move it, move it, you guys in a bit there, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right. So that's our um, that's our race. Assembled, okay. So now what you need to do is bearing in mind you, you did actually mark the direction of rotation, so you need to keep that. So we will drop the we'll drop that in sideways, okay, pick it up, and then they should literally just pivot around um somehow he says, making it sound a lot easier than it is. Um, let's have a quick look and see now what is it I'm doing wrong. Maybe, maybe it has to go down and down and around. I don't see why, but So we need to turn the uh, turn the race the inner race a little bit as well too. And basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to line the balls up with the notches in the uh, in the outer race. So there's a bit of jiggery pokery involved in this. And you can't obviously push things too far so that they uh, they end up um, all falling out on you again. So let's see now. There we go. Now, and we'll have to remake the marks again. But uh, really, the, now, now the the only mark that's important on that one is the one on the outer race, actually, because uh, the inner race one is uh, is done. So that's that's one assembled CV joint now. Okay, which is nice. That aside, now we'll try another one. We'll get a uh, we'll get the rest of them assembled, and um, then we'll start taking the shafts out of the van. Okay, um, the four CV joints are now together, and uh, it was fiddly, to be honest with you. It's just one of those things you just have to kind of keep at it until you get them all back, uh, get all the parts back together, and you just have to kind of move them around in different orientations. They sort of, the the, 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 the inner race kind of goes in sideways with the balls in and then twists around, but you have to push that either back or forth to try and line up the 
the balls with the slots in the outer race. So um, it's very hard for me to explain how to do it. So I kind of um, <laughs> I can't, to be honest. I just know that it happened. So anyway, they're uh, they're in, they're done. Um, so next thing to do is to get onto the dirty bit, which is the bit I'm not looking forward to, and that is removing the CV joints, um, or just the, the drive shafts from the van. And um, I am really, 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 really hoping that. When I do, I realise that the shafts in the van are the same length and size and everything as the Porsche 944 CV joint, er, uh, drive shafts here. Because if they are, I've already got them already cleaned up and I've already got them ready. Otherwise, I have to take the um, take the drive shafts apart from the van to try and uh, take the shaft out and uh, put these CV joints and boots and everything onto those shafts. And it's horrible work because the... Uh, Grease is all disgusting and black and horrible and full of crud and everything as well too. But we'll persevere. We'll get through it. We have the technology. We can rebuild it. So um, let's uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the van anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, if you have a look underneath here, um, you might not be able to, but I will be jacking the van up now in a minute. Um, show you sideways. No, I can't really see it. Look, we'll get the, we'll get the van jacked up, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, jack it on the rear trailing arm, so it'll keep the angle the same as it is when it's on the ground, more or less. And we can uh, we can then have a look and see how they're looking. Um, they're uh, it, one of the things that is vitally important when you're doing a job like this. Make sure you bring a pick with you and clean out the heads of the cap head bolts that are actually holding the CV joints in, because you won't be able to get the um, get the Allen key or uh, or the Allen key bit in t in far enough, and you end up just wringing them out. So uh, a little bit of prep work, like, like as if you were painting, a little bit of prep work makes the job a hell of a lot easier. So um, anyway, right, uh, Jack first. Axle stands, of course. Remember your axle stands. Get the van all set up and we'll have at it. Okay, so now we can see the shafts. Uh, there are axle stands under there and there and the jack is still underneath the other wheel. That one's obviously hanging down a bit. But um, you can see it's actually up against the inside of the trailing arm there. Uh, we will have to jack up that wheel a bit to, to get in at that. It's going to be an awful awkward bastard of a job to be honest with you. I'm not really looking forward to it. But it has to be done. I'm hoping they'd be alright and I wouldn't have to take them off, but ah, such, such is life. Anyway, you can see this one has got the jack underneath the trailing arm, so it's uh, it's still going in at an angle anyway, but not that bad an angle to be honest with you. Um look at we'll we'll reevaluate the situation when um when we have the uh shafts off and we'll see what condition the old C V joints were in. Maybe they were in bits already, you know, and it was just a case where they were kind of worn and this just pushed them to the air, to their edge. Uh, but when I was talking to Trev, he said that he's having awful problems with his um, CV joints. And uh, he's got a TDI conversion in a bay window bus, which is a 70s van. And obviously things are going to be slightly different there, but, you know, it's uh, more or less the same kind of thing. So, anyway, I'm going to get tooled up and we're going to have at those uh, shafts and get them out of here. Um, the next time you see me, I'm going to have a horrible black dirty face and a uh, pain in my ass. But sure, anyway, look, at, we'll keep going. It's a six millimeter um, uh, cap head bolt, by the way, or a six millimeter head. So that's what you uh, need to remove it. And what you do is you get your uh, Allen key bit in there, tap it in with a hammer after cleaning the head out. I've already cleaned the heads out of these. And uh, then you just, if you don't have an impact gun, you're going to have to use a a ratchet, but to be honest with you, if you can get an impact going at all, I strongly recommend it. Um, just a little bit shy of the mark there. I think I might just use a wobbly. These uh, extensions on the, the the tang extensions I have are great because they have a kind of a ball end on them. So if you clip it on fully. It's straight, but if you pull it off slightly, you get a, you get a little bit of movement from it, which might just be enough in order to get me out of here. Or the other thing as well too, I could do and not be an idiot is actually just undo the handbrake and turn the wheel. That might make more. That might make more sense. 
Well, those matches make it a bit easier. Right. Let's try it out again. Still not, I wouldn't call it an easy, easy job, but... I believe the word you're looking for is, uh, stitched. Okay. And you'll see on these, there's a kind of a, 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 a sort of a spacer thing, that's to stop the bolts from coming loose. So, uh, you need to make sure you reuse them, or get new ones, better again. Okay, there's three out of the six. Aha, uh -huh. I've only got the impact gun on two instead of three. There we go. Okay, so there's CV joint number one. Well, look, I'd just be glad, uh, I'm, I, I can just be glad that I'm not doing it on the side of the road when there's lashing rain or something like that, so. Anyway, um, you guys are in the way, so. I'm gonna carry on. Waiting to see where the, the next one is. This is a, it's gonna be hours of entertainment. So, basically in there, in amongst that, uh, uh, the, the trailing arm, that's the trailing arm goes off there. Um, looking a bit crusty, but it's all right. Uh, it's solid anyway. So, uh, right, so now I need to clean out those, uh, uh, those bolts and um, get, uh, get the bolt out and we can remove our shaft and see how we're looking. Okay, there's one shaft out anyway. I still have to get the other one out, but uh, for the moment that's progress. Um, and it's an absolute pain in the ass of the job, to be honest with you. But uh, just before we go any further, let's offer up the Porsche 944 shaft 
Let's see if there's... They might be. I think they might be, folks. If that is the case, I am a very, very happy man. Oh, you beauty. They are exactly the same part. So there you go, uh, Porsche 944 owners. Your your car, your beautiful little sports car, has Volkswagen camp, uh, camper van drive shafts in it. Hey, <laughs> right, that's really good, actually. That's brilliant news. So that means I don't have to touch these. Um, because I wasn't looking forward to that. It would make an, an awful mess. So, uh, yeah, basically, what I'm, well, I might actually take one of the CV joints off and actually have a look at them. But uh, for the moment, anyway, that's uh, that's me, a very happy man. Now, um, I will actually take a kind of a, a more exact measurement than just eyeballing but um, you know to be honest with you if there's two or three mil in it it's not going to make a difference um, in the grand scheme of things you know what they're exactly the same I'd say they even have the same part number on it you know that so okay right um, Let's get the other shaft out now, so at least that way then I can just put the other, the other set of shafts together and we can uh, bolt them in and um, then we're well on our way. Two shafts! Ah! 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 <coughs> Sorry, I uh, don't know, something got caught in my throat there. Uh, yeah, two shafts. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, so we've got the old shafts out, so now we can actually start putting the new ones together. And uh, I got the appropriate molybdenum grease. I love that word, molybdenum. Molly grease for short. Um, so uh, yeah, basically we can uh, we can start assembling them, and um, it, it's great because it means that I can actually leave these alone now. And um, uh, yeah, great. Now the only thing is, as I said, what I'm going to do is before we actually st oh look, there's a split boot. There you go. Well, isn't it as well? We had it off. So actually, you know what? Let's take this um, let's take this CV joint off. And have a look at it and see. Uh, what I want to do is I want to actually measure the uh, measure the balls. Incidentally, the other ones were actually uh, they're only, only seventeen mil. I just didn't zero the uh, the the vernier um, like an idiot. Uh, I, I was only just doing it quickly. In fairness, it was close enough. Uh, so yeah, so these ones um, these ones should be nineteen mil. So uh, it makes all the difference because. Um, the, uh, it, cha it changes the amount of articulation that's available to you inside in the CV joint. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll, we'll push that uh, push that boot back. Um, there's a circlip on the end of the shaft inside and all that grease. Um, and that, oh wait, where do you think you're going? Uh, right. Yeah. So basically, we need to remove that circlip. It's one of those annoying circlips. It doesn't actually have the holes in the end of it. It's only just got kind of two flats which you have to try and grab. But um, we'll pop it off and have a look. So let's do that. Okay, so here's the CV joint from the van. Um, well, one of them anyway, obviously. So uh, let's uh, let's take this apart. So basically what you do is you push that in, uh, pivot it around, and then that should just fall out like that. Yeah. There you go. And then your balls all fall out. All right. So that's the inner race. Cage, outer race. So what we want to do is, I'm just going to give my fingers a little white before I touch any of my other tools. Uh, rag. You buy these bags of rags in a motor van just for about 10 euro. They're um, always worth having in the garage. The thing about them is though, is you never know what size you're going to get. I think I got half a bedspread here when I pulled that out. So <laughs> anyway. Um, Right, so let's measure one of those balls and see. We just, I just, just for pig iron, um, make sure that they, they definitely look bigger. I mean, I'm looking at one of the other ones there. So, there's an interesting one. They're actually 20 mil. They're not 19 mil. So there's actually three millimeters in the difference between the uh, the the balls and the Porsche. Uh, drive shaft and uh, you can't see anything what I'm doing. Um, there's the, uh, the VW one. There's the Porsche one. Notable size difference. So hopefully that'll make all the difference. So that's that'd be 17 and a half. The as I said, the battery in the vernier is going, but I can see it. Um, I'll get another one, another battery at some stage for it. So yeah, seventeen and a half versus nineteen, so or versus twenty. So uh, you're talking two and a half mil there, which is not an insignificant amount. Now there's a question as to whether or not the 
you know, why they put the larger balls in and that as well too, is it to take the extra weight. But bearing in mind that these were the CV joints that were fitted to a van that had a 1.6 straight diesel engine that had um, it, it, about a, it wouldn't have had enough power to pull a soapy stick out of a dog's arse. So uh, they were a little on the underpowered side of things, to say the least. Um, the 1.6 turbo diesel did remedy the situation somewhat, which is what, what, uh, what our van would have had. Um, but uh, even that was a, a bit on the asthmatic side of things. Um, so the 1.9 TDI is, uh, is grand, you know, to be honest with you, it's got plenty of pulling power for the task the task required of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bag up that um, that CV joint there because I actually do want to keep it. Um, I'm going to do a, a more detailed inspection. Let's get the other shafts put together and put them in. I, I've just painted the uh, I painted the shafts anyway, first of all, so that... Um, they're all uh, looking nice and that as well too. There's no point in putting dirty shafts in. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, right, so that's the uh, next thing to do is to start assembling. Okay, so the first thing you need to remember to do is to put the boots on. Because um, you can't put them on after you've, uh, you've uh, done the job. So we'll just get our It never go on e as easily as you would like. Fortunately enough, the the, uh, the, the uh, shafts I bought actually came with four um, four serviceable uh, boots, which, to be honest with you, to me is worth the it's worth the seventy euro in itself. Without a, I paid seventy euro for it, um, so it's worth the seventy euro before you do anything else. Like even if I only got say two CV joints out of them, it was still worth the punt, you know. And I got the shafts and everything, so. Definitely, uh, I'm definitely quids in. Um, just need a, a little screwdriver just to ease it over. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna grease it because what will happen is uh, the room paint on the shaft. We'll be greasing them afterwards. Just wanna push the. Sh No, we we'll greased them first. A little bit of WD-40 in there won't go amiss, because that's not going anywhere. Right, so I'll just, I'll just put a bit of WD-40 in there. Come on. There we go. Now. Okay, so that's... That's on now. We'll push it right up there for the moment and get it out of our way. And um, we'll put the other one on the other side as well too. So uh, again, same situation. Squirty UB40. I don't want to turn it inside out. Now, try that again. There's a kind of a, it's not just a, there's quite a deep collar on this, if you know what I mean. So it's not as willing to kind of go over the step on a drive shaft as you might like. So I know you're out of, you can't see what I'm doing at this point in time, but just bear with me a second. Okay, now, there we go. So there's our two, uh, our two boots on. So that's step one. Right, so they're in the middle. Uh, next thing is, there are these uh, spacer rings which go on and um, they're actually slightly concave so I suppose the uh, I didn't actually make a note but I would imagine the um, the concave uh, the, the convex part of it goes against the uh, against the back of the shaft and it goes like that so um, yeah 
So that's that, and then what we can do now is we can slip one of our CV joints on. Now this is interesting because of the fact that there's um, there's now a direction of rotation which we have to pay attention to. So what we need to do is we need to um, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to have a look at the drive shaft on the, uh, the the drive shaft that came off the van because I want to have a look at that ridge that was on the uh, on the other one. So there's a ridge there on that, and that's up against the drive uh, the drive flange. So if we can get both of our um, drive shafts, uh, both of our CV joints on in that same way, then uh, I'm going to put you over here actually because I want to get a better view. Um, yeah, there we go. Now, so if we can get, uh, looking at the direction of rotation, basically what we need is we need the direction of rotation to be the same on both ends. So um, that one there will be on that end and then let's have a look here. So that one here can go here. Right. We'll, we'll worry about that now in a second. Um, let's just see if this one here fits on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Right. All right. So there's the CV joint on on that end. And uh, we can put our safe clip on now. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do is before I put the... Uh, CV joint on. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some grease in on the balls and that as well too. So uh, I'll go and get the tub of grease I bought and uh, we'll do that. Okay, so let's get our uh, let's get our joints greased up here. Um, need to get a good bit of grease in in around the the raceways and don't don't be shy about stuffing it in there. Okay, you need to use a lot of this stuff. Right, proper lubrication at this point in time is going to make the CV joints last a hell of a lot longer than if you don't if you don't grease them properly, they won't last any time at all. So, so I'm taking my time making sure I get plenty of grease in here. It is this type of grease you need, the uh, molly grease. Um, so don't be inclined to use the other stuff because uh, it it um, it'll work to a limited effect, but uh, it's not the right stuff. Um, it can't handle the uh, pressures that the molly grease can handle. You know, does it? If you imagine, there's a lot of pressure on the balls in the CV joint when you're accelerating, or if you're descending down the slope or whatever as well too. Okay, so that's that's greased up now. Stuff it back onto the. This is not the type of job to do if you're afraid of getting your hands dirty, I can assure you. It does help to have gloves on, in fairness, but the gloves inevitably rip. Okay, so there we go. So that's. Pretty happy with that now. So you can see here now that's a CV joint number one. So I'm going to put a set on there, and then I'm going to, before we put the boot on, I'll actually put another good smear of grease on. Okay, so the um, the shaft is together now, uh, basically. So um, I have the uh, two CV joints on the the tr uh, the washer on the back, the uh, thrust washer, and the uh, circ clip on the. Um, on the outside, and then we've got our boot here. So what we're going to do now is they're both greased. The CV joints are greased up, but what we're going to do is we're going to get a good gob of grease. And we're going to stuff it in there and push the boot down over it. So um, that's kind of the next thing we need to do. So uh, when I say a gob of grease, I'm talking about like you know, ladle it on. Like don't be shy of the stuff because that's going to work its way down through the through the shaft, uh, through the CV joint as you're driving and uh, do its thing then. So, yeah, it's messy work, but if it works and, we, and uh, I don't have any clicking CV joints anymore, it'll all be worth it. And to be honest with you, I think it will work. All right, there's one end. Happy days, I'm delighted with that now. So that's, uh, that's number one, and number two is this one here, and uh, we will Proceed in a similar manner, and uh, I'll bring you back when we have them all done. Okay, folks, we have our two drive shafts uh, back together and ready to fit to the van. So um, that's uh, 
that's next on the agenda. So um, yeah, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to just go through the uh, the bolts, make sure they're all all right, and um, that uh, and just give them a little uh, clean and that as well too. And then I'm going to reassemble them, uh, reinstall them in the uh, in the back of the van. So uh, yeah, I'll get stuck in. Just. One thing to note, actually, um, you can see the arrow there that uh, that I wrote on the um, the outer races. So uh, that's basically the way they're going to be installed in the van, rotating that direction in normal uh, normal travel. So uh, um, it all worked out well, actually. So I have four CV joints that rotate that direction uh, and not and aren't against the wearing surfaces anymore. So um, we should be pretty good here in this. Okay, I have the shafts back in, and as predicted, I have a massive pain in my knob with it. What a f an absolute pain in the ass of a job that was. Um, trying to get them lined up, you know, when you're in the when when it's in the kind of the box shape section of the um, of the trailing arm, trying to get them lined up in there, and uh, yeah, it's great fun altogether. Anyway, it's it you know it's probably one of those jobs that if you had a ramp or something like that, it'd be reasonable enough. Like you know, it wouldn't take it that long. But like you're talking twenty doing up twenty four bolts when you're lying on your back and trying to support the uh, shaft and you have to jack up the wheel to get the alignment right and all that kind of carry on as well too. But um, anyway, it's done now. So um, next thing we need to do is take it for a drive and see if the problem is cured. If it's not, well let's just let's just hope it is. To be honest with you, we'll see how we fare. Right, folks, I have the uh, van back on the ground anyway now. So. Um, uh, come with me and I'll show you uh, what the um, angle of the actual CV joints looks like. Um, and yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll actually go in underneath the van now. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure grease and filth. There's something along those lines. Right, that's the easiest one to see. There you go. So that one there is, that's fitted now obviously and um, you can see the, it, it, it's already at an angle, even with the van sitting on the ground. Now you see that green disc in there? That's actually a spacer in the rear suspension I put in because the um, the uh, van was dragging its arse on the ground because of uh, camp carrying around the camping interior for 30 years. Uh, the spring sagged a little bit, so that just kind of compensates for it and sort of gets the the back the, the right height of the back up to the same as it is up the front. I could change the springs, but I'm not arsed, to be honest with you. They do absolutely fine. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get it out for a spin and see how it goes. I have a, a little uh, errand to run, so um, it's a perfect opportunity to test it out. Okay, folks, I'm uh, suitably freshened up now and um, feeling a little bit less uh, miffed at having to climb, uh, crawl under the van doing that job. So let's uh, let's take it for a spin and see how we get on. Ah, yeah. Well, we're moving forwards anyway, so it's a good start. did hear a little bit of clicking there, but I'm hoping it's just a case of, uh, of the bedding in a little bit. It is a particularly uncomfortably warm day today. Okay, you know what, I'm actually cautiously optimistic now at this point in time because um, uh, although there was that little knocking uh, initially uh, when I took it for a um, when, when I took it out, I've been driving it for ten minutes now, and there's, there's been a bit of twisty stuff. Here's a nice tight bend. I'll, I'll, I'll actually. Oh, I'd be definitely getting knocking there, and uh, there isn't any, so I think we might we might be onto a winner, folks. So I am. Um, yeah, we'll have a listen anyway on the way back and see um, see how we're getting on. Jeez, I'm, just, I'm just coming out of a housing estate. I was running a little errand. It's like a, it's like a slalom course here. One of 
the um, one of the important things to do uh, is um, when you when you've changed your CV joints or really anything, any any moving part or anything like that, just check the tightness of the bolts after you've um, after you've run it for a while and make sure they haven't come loose again. Um, they are prone to coming loose actually if you don't tighten them up fully. Um, they're under a severe load. Oh, uh, incidentally, for for those of you uh, for those of you playing along at home um, and uh, who saw the uh, the fact that my uh, window wiper uh, driver side window wiper ended up um, arseways, uh, all it was was the nut had come loose on the spindle, so uh, it was just a case of tightening that up. Now the, the spline seemed to be well stripped out of the inside of the thing, so I may well replace it. You replace it yet? Okay, I, I just I threw it into the corner there a little bit with a bit of power on and uh, there's no clicking with the uh, CV joints under load or anything like that. I, I literally have only heard them click once now and that was, you know, they could have been, the, the, the balls could have been settling into the right position, they could have been, uh, it could have been just a bit of grease needed to move around them, uh, it could have been any number of things anyway. So I wasn't overly worried but, uh, well, I was apprehensive let's just say. But uh, look, I think, um, I think that the job is a good one, and um, so uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it there. So uh, tomorrow, uh, what I'm going to be doing, and it'll be in the next video, uh, I am going to be replacing the uh, steering rack bushes. Um, it's a common cause of waywardness in T25 vans uh, when the, uh, the, uh, the steering rack bushes start to go a bit spongy. But uh, I have a set of polyurethane bushes for it, and um, so I'm going to be fitting them and. Um, see how we get on there. Uh, by all accounts it's a straightforward enough job and I'm just after putting the, putting the pox on myself by saying that. Um, but uh, yeah sure look at um, don't forget to subscribe before you go folks and I'll chat to you soon. Cheers!